Hello everyone, we are Geeks Not Nerds, I'm Captain Logan. And I am Vince. And today we're going to uh, talk about uh, characters like the Punisher and the Hulk and about how well they fit in the Marvel Universe. Yeah, like a puzzle piece, you know, right there on the corner. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so, so you and I have had this, con this conversation lots of times, and I thought it would be cool to, to talk about it on uh, Geeks Not Nerds. Uh, Vince is a huge fan of the Punisher. So much so that he tries to, like, get every issue and trade that the Punisher has ever been in. Yeah. All these issues behind us, those are the Punisher. Not all of it, but a lot of it. Well, all of it. Except for this little cubby hole right here, all of that's the Punisher. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and, and uh, you've always said that you think that the Punisher doesn't work especially well with superheroes. Yeah. And being in a superhero kind of universe. But, of course, he's in a superhero universe, except for when he's in the Max line and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I thought it would be cool to talk about that and other characters kind of like the Punisher that um, are that work, you know, by themselves, but may not work so well in other continuities. Mm -hmm. so. See, the Punisher doesn't... The Punisher doesn't particularly work well with superheroes because he has a certain morality that isn't in line with other superheroes. So when the Punisher says, well, so that we can team up, I'm going to use rubber bullets, that's dumb. That makes no sense. And it happens frequently. Oh, does it? Even still? Yeah, well, not not recently. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you go back and look at Punisher stuff, it, it happened a lot in the early days where they say, well, we've just created this character that we can't use based on his <laughs> uh, <laughs> based on his morality. So let's make him to where he fits in with the other characters. That's I think, mm. and of course, you know, the Punisher first popped up in, in, in Amazing Spider-Man, and I think that when he first came in and was just a hired gun, that worked. Because mm. you have lots of hired guns, right? Well, I mean, he wasn't he's... technically a hired gun. Was he not? He wasn't paid. He was told that Spider-Man was a bad guy. Oh. Oh. Was he? Yeah. Is that not... What's funny is I actually have that issue and have never read it. <laughs> um, it's one of my. It's one of my. It's one of my best issues. I'm always afraid to crack it open. Anyway, I, ha I, ha I haven't. I haven't actually read all the way through that. Uh, but <laughs> I have it in trade, so I was uh, afraid. No, I thought he was just a hired gun. I... Okay. All right. Nope. I was... should read the things I own. The Punisher pretty much went. From that is the my... moral of this story. <laughs> the Punisher pretty much went from what he is, because he was essentially just a, a guy that went around killing bad guys, to uh, to a, a madman who would kill anybody, to what he is again. And then lots of really different odd things. Because I what think would be the point of writing, of writing him as just a madman who would kill anyone? What's the point of that? Like, the, the thing about it was that the Punisher, in a particular issue, I think a couple issues actually, he killed people for like jaywalking and littering. Things like just because he'd gone nuts. Yeah, and then you read the first Punisher story arc. They give you a little, bu a little uh, bubble that says he was drugged. Let's move on. <laughs> really? Because I mean, like, I, I kind of like the idea of that. Of he hits a breaking point and then he gets over it. You know, they they could have done that where he just he's got he's gotten so nuts that he's got to kill everyone who does anything kind of wrong. It was so absurd. Don't don't talk back to your mother. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I was reading a uh, Punisher comic book recently. That's not funny at all. <laughs> Oh, it is to me. Oh, okay. But, uh, because it's absurd. Any, anywhere. But uh, I was reading a Punisher comic book that uh, some guys, the Punisher said, that's illegal, you shouldn't do it. And he's pretty much threatening death on this guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, but you're a walking illegal. What are you doing? And he says, I'm the exception that proves the rule. And I say, hypocrisy. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I yeah. like that. So... I think, I think you've kind of summed up all the reasons that he doesn't work real well in the Marvel Universe, just because any other character he'd ever be around would want him either dead or in jail. Yeah. And, in fact, every time he teams up with somebody, I roll my eyes, because I feel like I know exactly what's going to happen. The Daredevil's going to say, he needs to go through the court system, and Spider-Man says, I need to capture him and give him to the cops, and then he's going to whine a little bit. And <laughs> anyway, Sorry. And... Uh, yeah. There are very few characters that he works well with for teaming up. Recently there was, uh, and I think at some point we might review this, but uh, re but recently there was a miniseries that you and I both read uh, with Punisher and Anti-Venom, and I actually thought that team-up worked really well. Yeah, you know, if he's written correctly, he can. Zeb Wells, who wrote that... But I also think part of it is just because of who he was teamed up with, right? Because we, we were talking about there's a lot of characters that he can't team up, but Anti-Venom is, I mean... I think I think that he he worked well as a team up with Anti Venom because Anti Venom didn't really care if he was dead or in jail. He just wanted him to help him accomplish something, you know. So, yeah. oh, I suppose I should maybe say the distinction between these two things. I suppose there's a difference between a team up and a crossover, because uh, I hate these things that treat uh, mm. that 
team-ups are largely useless for the Punisher, except for in the case of Anti-Venom, which worked really well. Yeah. But there is, a, also written by Zeb Wells, there is an amazing Spider-Man issue where the Punisher is in a crossover with Spider-Man, and it is written so well. And you get to actually get into the Punisher's psyche. Uh, they didn't do anything together. The Punisher was in the issue, they have a little fight scene, and the Punisher is essentially trying to track down some bad guys and kill them by using a uh, mutant growth hormone. Oh, that's a hard word to say. But, uh, and Spider-Man's trying to stop death from occurring. Okay, but that's not really a team-up. No, and that's my point. Okay, is that the, sure. The Punisher should not team up, but that doesn't so mean that he, he can't show up. So you're saying he can show up, he just, yeah. can't, he just can't necessarily team up. And that's where he works particularly well, and I think uh, that's somewhere that we wanted to take this conversation. Absolutely, yeah. And uh, so there are other characters that I would put in this category also. I'd put the Hulk in this category, and much like much like Punisher, and I think this is the reason they work well together, I would put, I would put Eddie Brock in this category. Yeah. I, I like... The Hulk, but I've never read a single Hulk. I take that back. Bruce Jones did some good stuff. It didn't stay good 100%, but it wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of his earlier stuff is pretty good. And I've never read the Hulk by himself. I don't think I've ever read a single issue of Hulk. And, I, and see, I, I've got some folks right now telling me I really needed to read uh, some Peter David and uh, go back to the old like Grey Hulk and stuff like that. And in my opinion, say, that's, that stuff is really good. But in my opinion, good Hulk is not about the Hulk. It's about it's about Bruce Banner. Right. Right. And that's where he's interesting, where he spends most of his time as Bruce. And you get to read about this guy's dilemma, and there's where your drama comes in. Well, I bring this up a lot when talking about the Hulk, uh, because I don't have a lot of reference points, but it, but it, I always thought it was interesting that uh, during the Hulk animated series in the 90s, uh, the Hulk was never by himself. There was almost always, the few, the, the few episodes I saw, there was almost always a guest star character from the Marvel Universe. The Iron Man would show up, Ghost Rider would show up. It's like they couldn't think of anything to do with the Hulk that didn't have another Marvel character in there with him. It seems to me that, uh, for, especially for Hulk and Punisher, people will use these, uh, it's almost like a scapegoat. They'll bring in a character that they either know how to write better, so that they can write a story involving the Hulk, or they'll bring in a character to where it'll become a novelty, and they'll write something that that people say, hey, that's really cool, Ghost Rider and Hulk. That's never happened before, or at least potentially at that time. So uh, then we get all giddy and we... <laughs> What's funny is, if it is an off events, I totally buy into it. And, and, and the reason is because uh, if you take a character that I'm not especially um, impressed with or interested in, and you, take a, and, a, and you put another character with that person that I am really, really interested in, it might give me a better appreciation for the other character. And, th and, and that happens. And uh, the... The Punisher Max did that for me with uh, with Kingpin because mm -hmm. it brought in Kingpin and I loved what it was doing with Kingpin and it made me appreciate the Punisher more. Oh yeah. So and, uh, I'm not gonna say it shouldn't be done. In fact, for me, I need it to happen or I'm not gonna be able to read those characters. And you know, sometimes the main line, the the title character doesn't have to be the one that the story's really about. I mean, because even with the Shadow and sure. some of the Dark Horse stuff, he was in the background. And uh, it's the Shadow. It's sound. It, it's a natural occurrence. Shadow, background. Yeah, absolutely. And the Punisher, that would seem like a natural type of thing to me, too. Because and the, the Punisher, Punisher was after largely the in the background mm -hmm. uh, in the Punisher Max stuff. And yeah. uh, and what I was going to say is... Well, the uh, Jason Aaron Punisher Max stuff. The, the current Punisher Max series, what they're calling the Punisher yeah. Max series, Literal right? Punisher Max. Punisher Max, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because I haven't read the stuff before that, but mm -hmm. I've been reading that. And uh, anyway... I, I think that having read some stuff with Punisher with characters that I like better, it might make it easier for me to jump off and now read good Punisher stuff by himself. You know, which, is why, which is why I mentioned that. And I, think, and I think the Hulk could potentially be the same way. Part of the problem with the Punisher is that people will try to humanize him to the point where they use his family all the time. Mm. And they'll draw on his family and then they'll make the Punisher this really inner emo moping guy that says, oh, this reminds me of my kids. No. <laughs> I mean, well, yes partially that's going to be on his mind. But we don't need to read about it. That's not interesting anymore. Right. Unless you go back to Punisher Year One. And that sucked, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Punisher Year One was awful. For entirely different reasons than being about his family. <laughs> but, uh, man, that was way, way off point. But uh, there's two good ways to write the Punisher. As a side character, where he's part of the plot, he's in the background. Or you really have to understand him. And Garth Ennis managed to do this, as well as, uh, I've forgotten the gentleman's name, but the guy that wrote the first five-issue, Volume 1. That was fantastic as well. And uh, 
they treat the Punisher as if this is a man who is completely lost to his compulsion. He's, he's, a, he's, he's focused. He knows what he wants. And that is as far as he's going to think about it. I will. I take that back. That's not the right word to use. But uh, he's an obsessed man. And that drives me nuts when people want to make him this either sloppy or whiny character. Sorry, I had to go on a rant. <laughs> no, no, absolutely. Uh, well, what do you think about this? Leave us a comment and let us know your thoughts. Once again, I want to mention that we're going to be at Free Comic Book Day doing a, uh, doing a bunch of stuff uh, during the day at Pop Culture Comics in Lenexa, Kansas on uh, May 1st. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Vince. And we'll see you later.